This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Okay, so what have I got here in front of me? Uh, it's actually an incredibly simple system. Uh, what you've got basically is uh, a relatively high-powered green laser pointer, and uh, it's arranged in respect to a hanging drop of water so that the laser shines through the side of the drop, which is approximately spherical. And uh, the drop serves as a lens that projects uh, the laser light onto the wall. And the really cool effect is that you can actually see uh, microscopic flora and fauna uh, in the drop of water. Very one of the cool. Things, one of the things that attracted me to this project was uh, how remarkable the effect you can achieve, but you use so little equipment. You I'm get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, I see that. I'm trying to get it all lined up here. Um, how'd you first hear about this project, and like, what got you inspired to make this thing? Well, there was a post uh, on a site called terabolt.org that I blogged about uh, a few months ago. And uh, it turns out the idea uh, originates, as far as I know, uh, with a Slovenian physics professor uh, who wrote a paper in 2001 uh, for a physics education journal about how to do this. And his version uh, actually uses Legos to hold the, you know, the drop a lot of water in relation to the laser pointer. Classic. But like I said, I, I got into it because I was just amazed at the uh, the effect you could achieve with such a simple device. I mean, you're basically building like kind of a full motion video projector microscope all in one, and it's just like a couple of bits of junk from your you know your junk box. I mean, it really does like turn the your wall into a movie theater. I could watch this thing all day. I, we've gone through so many batteries on your laser pointer because it's just so much fun to watch. Um, we. Um, I got this water sample at your suggestion from a local pet store. Um, I remember you sent us some water, but the, I don't know, it's Janu it was early, it was January, so the microbes maybe froze. But I went into my local pet store and asked them for a water sample from their aquarium filter. And um, after I explained that it was for a science project and I was going to be teaching people how to look at things uh, with a microscope, even though it's this DIY one, um, they were happy to give me a water sample. So what you're looking at now here is... Um, Oh, there goes a little microbe. Um, is the projection, and we can actually hit the lights. Yeah, look at that. All right, so um, hopefully you can see that we have like this. Uh, I mean, maybe Sean, what, what can you explain to us about what we're seeing here on the wall? Well, uh, I can't actually see it right now. Oh, that's true, I'm, right? I'm, you can't see it, but you've seen it before. <laughs> Tell yes, us I'm, what I'm, we were looking at. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, what you're seeing is a bunch of little sort of uh, dark spherical objects moving around. Typically, they have rings of refraction. Around yeah. them. That's what we're yeah. seeing, and they're all kind of moving around together. Is that because they're just uh, on the surface of the? Is what? What are are those? The microbes, or is that dust? After you watch for a while, you can sort of get a sense for the way that the particles are moving. Right, you sort of get a sense for like the dots are moving in a pattern that suggests there's fluid flow. And when you see something that's living, you will know it because it's moving independently or swimming or wiggling. Uh, apart from sort of the random fluid motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely tell that. And when I turn the ceiling fan off, we, uh, we, we try to turn the ceiling fans off to get little, little, as little air current as possible. Um, it really swirls when the ceiling fan's on. Um, yeah, you have, we, you have to leave it, you have to leave it still lights. for a while to get a good image, I think. OK, so um, hopefully. Uh, Sean, there's some people in the chat room. They're wondering uh, how much would it cost to make one of these, and how long would it take? You know, it's, it's really cheap to make one of these. Of course, the expensive item is the laser pointer itself. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's a 30 milliwatt green laser pointer. Uh, it was a couple hundred bucks when it was bought for me as a gift like two or three years ago. But I'm pretty sure you can get a comparable green laser pointer these days for 50 or 60 bucks. And everything else is like odds and ends from the hardware store. I would guess you could probably get in and out for $75. Is there a way for us to tell what the magnification level is, like how big the actual dots are that we're looking at? There is, and I don't know the formula off the top of my head, uh, but uh, it is in the paper that I mentioned by the Slovenian physics professor. And I don't know if you all still have that link ready to serve, but it's in the comments section from the article on uh, Make Projects. Right, right. And people can head to the Make Projects site to learn how to build this. And uh, we'll stick that link up so that you can get the full instructions. Can um, you use a, a different color laser, like a red laser? Colin Cunningham's actually asking that. I, I'm assuming that you probably could, actually. In fact, that's one of the experiments I'd really like to try, uh, is to see how um, you know, the color of the laser affects the quality of the image. 
uh, my intuition is that uh, like uh, the shorter wavelength lasers towards the blue would uh, may produce like fewer less refraction and give you a clearer image. But I'm not sure, and I really would like to test that. But I can't think of any reason why red or and or blue wouldn't work. So you you've played with this a, a fair amount. Is there anything you you learned from making it that might change the way you do it in the future, or any modifications that you think you'd make? I think uh, the you know it it does require a fairly powerful laser, and uh, you know if you use uh, if you use eye protection, if you use goggles that are wavelength and power appropriate for your laser source, it's not dangerous. But uh, something you have to be aware of working with uh, powerful lasers is reflection off of bright metal surfaces. So I think when I build version 2.0, uh, it's not going to have so many shiny metal parts because, well, I really don't think it's dangerous. You want to avoid the possibility of straight reflections. reflections rather. Uh, yeah. Have you ever used it with like a drop of blood or anything? Would that work, you think? Uh, someone's asking in the chat I, room about my, that. my experience of it is that you need to have a fairly clear sample for it to work. I, I will admit uh, to having tried my saliva earlier today. <laughs> nice. How did that work? It was before I brushed my teeth, so it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah I didn't want to share the results it was, with it you was guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was cool looking, but it was definitely cloudier than the water I got from the aquarium. I actually uh, used uh, at your, another one of your uh, sort of suggestions was to add some activated carbon charcoal, uh, like aquarium filter stuff oh, to my right, sample. Oh, that's right, y'all actually had to clear your sample. Yeah, we had yeah. algae in our sample, but... Yeah, which supports good. my theory that the sample really needs to be optically uh, transparent. So maybe transparent. blood might not work so well because the light won't travel all the way through it. Of course, you might dilute it. I mean, you might try a sample of blood and you might try diluting it to the point that the light could pass. And then you might actually see something interesting. I don't know. That would be a worthwhile experiment. Do you Where know off the top of your head, like, what's the scale between, like, the microbes we're looking at and, say, the size of a blood cell? I have no idea. I, I really am not. I, don't, I know very little about uh, microbial taxonomy or microbiology. I'm not sure I can tell you that. Sorry. <laughs> and you were saying when we were talking about this previously that that like microbial um, like identification is actually really hard, right? So is, is it like it's it's hard for us to even these are blurry, right? They're not in focus. Is there a way sure. for us to tell what we're looking at? I think you know uh, people who know what they're talking about can uh, can tell you well that's a rod bacteria, you know, based on the shape. But uh, in terms of like actually identifying you know genus and species, I mean, you can go out in your backyard and produce a come up with a sample of microbes that has, you know, species that no one, have ever, no one has ever, like, identified before. And without, uh, like, DNA uh, fingerprinting, it's actually very hard to tell what microbes are. Oh, yeah. Specific. I did see one of those long ones the other day when we were playing around with it. It's, I, it could, like, bend and straighten itself. That was kind of Oh, that's exciting. cool. I've never seen that. That would be a really cool thing to see. It was really exciting. But every once in a while, you'll see one like swim by, and it's really crazy because it's like, oh, that guy had somewhere to go, and it's really obvious that it's a living thing, and it's really exciting to see such small living things. Neat. Okay. Thanks, John.